minute to get my slides up and running. Is that looks good? Perfect. Great. Okay, well, thanks everyone. Uh, like I said, um, or I guess, uh, like Ryan said, my name is Haley Babb. Um, my formal title is I'm an Open Education Project Manager with Spark, uh, the Scholarly Publishing and Academic Resources Coalition. Um, but I'm excited to be speaking to you today in my capacity as uh, part of the conference organizing team um, of the Open Education Conference. Um, and we'll get into a little bit more about um, what the Open Education Conference is for those who may not be familiar um, and why exactly we wanna have a conversation about the future of the conference um, as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess just a couple housekeeping things on, on my end. Um, we're a little bit of a smaller group today, which is totally fine. Um, we're using a tool called Mentimeter. So it's a um, online um, interactive um, sort of polling tool. So um, though there's a smaller group um, in the audience today, what we will do is um, leave the Mentimeter link open so that if uh, folks are following the session um, as a recording, um, they'll be able to still um, go on and submit feedback. So I just wanted to make that clear at the beginning. Uh, but before we get into all that, um, I'll just do sort of a brief overview uh, of what I'm hoping to talk about today. So first and foremost, um, I'm going to give a little bit of background, a little bit of context um, as to uh, what's going on and, and why I'm here talking to you today. Um, but uh, hopefully the bulk of the session can be sort of gathering some feedback, uh, specifically from the uh, Michigan OER Summit community um, in particular. So um, I'm very excited to, to hear from you. And then at the very end, uh, we'll do some follow-ups and some uh, information about where you can go to get more information about the conference. All right, so uh, what is open ed? Um, so I know that folks may have varying uh, levels of familiarity with the conference. Um, for those who are completely new, the Open Education Conference was actually founded about 18 years ago, um, and it was uh, an annual convening for open education practitioners, um, primarily across uh, the US and Canada. It was, um, I think at one point, it was the largest um, conference uh, in North America dedicated specifically to open ed. Um, so that uh, went on in its uh, initial iteration for about 16 years. Um, but in 2019, the original organizer of the conference um, did opt to step down um, in order to um, leave it up to the community to sort of determine, you know, what the ownership of the conference would look like um, and what would come next um, as uh, the conference continues to evolve. Um, so that's where uh, we come in. Um, so immediately after the 2019 conference um, and immediately before what we now know is the, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, Spark, OpenStax, the Colorado Department of Higher Education and the Maryland Open Source Textbook Initiative um, came together to propose um, a plan to carry the conference through a two year period. Um, so um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, each the 2020 and the 2021 conferences, um, but uh, I guess a little bit about the organizing partnership. I'll just pop in the chat really quick, um, a link to uh, sort of that original proposal and, and, and um, how all of that came about. It's very uh, nostalgic to look back at now. Um, but in terms of our organizing partnership, um, so OpenStax has been kind enough to um, step up as our sort of fiscal lead. Um, Spark, my organization, has been managing conference operations. And then the Colorado Department of Higher Ed and Maryland um, Kerwin Center uh, originally had come on uh, hoping to be uh, the respective hosts of the 2020-2021 in-person conferences. Um, but obviously that has shifted um, in light of the pandemic. So they've still stayed on as um, incredible partners throughout this. So very grateful to them. Uh, let's see if I can go next. Awesome. So um, the conference truly was, uh, you know, intended to be extremely community led. Um, we held uh, open call for volunteers through sort of as many channels as we had access to. Um, and then through those uh, uh, volunteers um, recruited individual folks to be part of our um, conference organizing teams. Um, so that includes things like our diversity, equity, inclusion committee. Um, our program committee um, and our strategic planning committee, which I'll talk about um, in a little bit more detail uh, in just a moment. Um, so those groups um, have been holding monthly community calls throughout the uh, organizing process 
in order to be um, as transparent as possible with the community to provide, uh, you know, not only feedback, uh, to, or not only to provide updates, but to collect feedback from them as well. Um, and we've also um, built feedback opportunities into Open Ed 20 and are hoping to do the same at uh, Open Ed 21. So the Open Ed uh, 20 conference um, was held uh, November 9th to 13th, 2020. The theme was reimagining open education, which, uh, you know, on the cusp of the conference uh, undergoing uh, new management, so to speak. And then also with the, the immediate shift to online learning, there really was a lot to reimagine at that time. Um, and I think there are still, you know, lots of things that we're working to um, really figure out when it comes to moving into this new environment. Um, but uh, yeah, it was the first ever virtual convening of the conference. Um, we were able to draw more than 1600 attendees from over 60 different countries um, and held over 250 sessions. Um, there was also a significant percentage of first time attendees. Um, and I, you know, I think we definitely attribute a lot of this to um, a lot of the barriers that came down when we moved the conference online. Um, just the, the new um, the folks that we were able to reach um, was so exciting and um, just an incredible learning opportunity to hear from so many different perspectives who weren't always um, historically the regular uh, sort of crowd. Um, we are going ahead with Open Ed 21. So this will be the second uh, year of the two-year commitment for the organizing partnership. So that's slated to take place from October 18th to 22nd. Uh, which is coming up faster than we think. Um, so we're very much looking forward to that. Uh, the theme for this one is making open for all. Um, we're very excited to be announcing our keynote soon and registration is open if you are interested um, in going to take a look. I will just pop the um, link into the chat as a bit of a plug. So um, what's next? That's the background, sort of what's been going on, what's happening here. Um, but what's coming up next in our process? So um, obviously as we come up at the end of this two year commitment, the question is starting to ring more and more, um, I guess, urgent as to you know, what's going to happen afterwards and what's going to happen uh, for Open Ed 22. Um, so earlier this year, um, we were excited to launch a strategic planning process uh, to sort of sort out some of these questions. And um, the slide you're seeing on my screen right now is a screenshot um, of a blog post that we posted. Um, so I'll add that into the chat as well for those who are interested. Um, but what we did was, um, you know, formally sort of assemble um, our strategic planning committee um, to start to make decisions <clears throat> about, um, you know, what sort of mission, vision, values are we gonna hold? And then from there make decisions about co conference operations um, and how to move forward in sort of the most sustainable way um, in this new uh, year. So our goal from the beginning um, has always been to become a sustainable, truly community-led, truly community-governed conference um, while centering our values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so I'm very excited um, to be able to say that um, we are uh, at the, I guess, end of a draft uh, version of a strategic vision for the conference. Um, this is uh, going to be open for public consultation very soon. Um, we're actually uh, putting the final finishing details on it, I think this afternoon. So hopefully it will be out by the end of the week um, and you folks will have the opportunity to comment on it. Um, but unfortunately you've just flown uh, a little bit too early for me to have it ready for this presentation. Um, but uh, anyway, what this is, it's the product of sort of months long collaboration with our strategic planning committee made up of community volunteers who've been doing engagement with the community over the past several months to really get to the bottom of the question of, you know, what is going to be the, the purpose of this, of this convening? What is the vision? What are the shared values that the community holds? Who is the community? Um, a lot of these really, really big questions that it's been, um, challenging to, to sort of grapple with. Um, so anyway, this draft strategic vision that we've built, it outlines these things, the proposed mission vision values and um, sort of an approach to how we do the work. Uh, so like I said, that will be available um, very soon. I'll be sharing uh, at the end of the presentation sort of ways that you can stay involved with the conference. Um, but, uh, you know, our email list is available on our website on any page you go to. If you just scroll to the very bottom, there's a stay in the loop tab, um, or you can follow us on social media. It's at, at HeyOpened um, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So we'll be posting 
um, the link to that um, as soon as it's uh, available. Um, but for now, you know, <laughs> sort of the purpose of um, what we're uh, hoping to get out of today is to hear from you folks specifically. Um, so um, while you will have an opportunity to more formally um, make public comment on the draft strategic vision, um, we're really interested in hearing some more um, tailored questions specifically to the Michigan uh, OER community. Um, so <laughs> um, I know there's a little bit of a smaller group today, so don't feel pressured um, to participate. Um, I will just sort of run through the questions verbally um, for anyone watching the recording uh, who will be sort of able to participate. Um, but we're using a polling tool called Mentimeter. Um, so in order to set up Mentimeter, you have two options. You can um, scan the QR code that's on the screen for you right now, um, or go to www.menti.com um, and enter the code 44000860, um, where you'll be able to follow along um, either with me if you're live or um, submit uh, your feedback through the uh, recording that you're watching. All right, so uh, <laughs> we usually just start off with um, a little bit of a, um, a silly question at the beginning just to get everyone sort of used to the platform. Um, so uh, feel free to try that out. Um, excited to hear how everyone's feeling coming up on the, the end of the conference. Um, and then we have just sort of another uh, question. I'm interested in um, familiarity with the Open Education Conference in general and um, whether or not folks have attended. Yay, so I see someone who's been a few times. <laughs> That's fantastic. Awesome. So these um, questions are a little bit more sort of thought provoking. Um, so, um, you know, feel free to sort of go through and answer what you like, what sort of speaks to you. Um, but the things that we really want to understand are, you know, what motivates you to be an open education practitioner or advocate? Um, what are the issues, you know, that you deal with on a day to day basis? Um, and what uh, are the sorts of things that, you know, the open education conference community um, can be coming together to try and help address? I'll just give a minute for folks, whether you're live or recording, to just uh, take a minute and think about that. Um, but we can hop on to the second question. Um, so also interested in knowing, you know, what are the challenges that you face in your work? So sort of building off the first question a little bit, um, what are those specific roadblocks that really um, are inhibiting you from doing, you know, the best that you can do um, as an open education advocate? Um, we hear all the time, you know, things like funding, of course, um, but also like institutional support, sort of in terms of um, time and um, recognition, um, but interested to hear sort of what's specific um, here in Michigan. All right. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it's not my full time job is an add on to my real job. Yes, totally makes sense. Um, I think there's a lot of people, you know, who are just, you know, super passionate about this work and also try to do it um, in whatever capacity they're able to. So um, all folks are, you know, definitely part of part of this community and um, people were interested in, in supporting. Um, oh, well, there we go. <laughs> who makes up the open education community? Um, so I think, you know, uh, in the past, we've seen, um, obviously, you know, a real dominance of this field by librarians, but um, more and more as uh, open education grows as a concept, um, we're seeing, you know, obviously, you know, faculty, students, um, policymakers, administrators, instructional designers, um, countless others um, who are making real incredible contributions to this field. So, um, you know, when we are building the open education conference um, into, you know, whatever it's going to be in the future, I think we really uh, need to think about who has not historically sort of been invited to the table and who can we continue um, to pull in. Um, K to 12 folks is definitely one that comes to mind. Awesome. And yeah, seeing a ton of those um, things that I mentioned come up on the screen. That's fantastic. Great. So um, this sort of gets into a little bit deeper. We're just curious to know 
Um, what role do you foresee the Open Education Conference um, playing in the open education community? Um, so obviously, you know, this has been an annual conference in the past. Um, what else sort of do you foresee um, this uh, entity playing? And I guess uh, I'll ask um, in just a minute specifically what that looks like for Michigan, um, but just sort of in general curious if there's any um, feedback on this one. <clears throat> Um, and then yes, like I mentioned, um, so curious to know specifically in terms of Michigan, what are some of the challenges that Michigan's facing and what can an entity like the Open Education Conference um, potentially support um, going forward, you know, not just for this uh, state or region, but for others as well. So I know these questions are getting a little bit more <laughs> challenging, but um, like I said, this will be open um, throughout so folks can uh, sort of submit as they feel. Amazing, helping people connect regionally. Yeah, I think that's a huge thing, especially, you know, like we can say over and over again, the difference that uh, the pandemic has had on the way that we connect at conferences. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, the more opportunities um, for collaboration, I think is, is just always amazing. So, um, great. Okay. So this is perhaps, um, a, a very tricky question and it's okay if, um, you don't necessarily have a response for it, but we are curious to know, you know, what are some of the best practices that exist, uh, in the open education community in terms of, uh, governance, um, the way that organizations are structuring themselves, um, this is, uh, you know, a great one where we want to pull in our commitment to transparency, to community involvement, to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and make sure that um, however this conference uh, is operated in the future um, is, you know, as accessible um, and serves as many people in the community as possible. Um, so just curious if there's other organizations that you know of that would be great for us to look into or any uh, thoughts immediately about, you know, what this is actually going to look like on paper going forward. Um, so, uh, no worries if, uh, there's nothing just yet. All right. Uh, and then, so like I said, we have, um, completed a draft of our strategic vision, mission, all of that. Um, but we are still curious to know, you know, what, sort of things should be prioritized in that document. Um, I think, you know, we've seen a lot of the stuff I've already talked about uh, in terms of transparency, inclusion, um, but, you know, really curious to know for the Michigan community specifically, um, what are the things that are top of mind? What are the, what are the things that you think we should include? And then you can see when this launches in the next <laughs> day or two, whether or not we were able to <laughs> incorporate them. Accessibility, that's definitely, definitely a huge one. Great. All right, I'll keep moving us along. Um, I believe this is the last question. I think I said that for the last two, but um, you know, what does success look like for the Open Education Conference over the next two years? Um, so in another, you know, stretch of two-year commitment, um, what else will we have done to make the conference successful? Um, <clears throat> almost get it, get it. All right. Vibrant, varied attendance, representative presenters. Totally, totally agree. Yeah, not only the attendance, but also, you know, who's presenting as well. Great, okay. Uh, so lastly, just curious uh, if there's anything else you wanna share with us, anything that you feel that we should keep in mind um, when going through the strategic planning process uh, at all. So feel free to, to share your thoughts in there at the end. All right. Okay, so that's uh, that's the um, engagement portion of, of our presentation. I'm just gonna close out um, 
you know, by letting you know how you, how you can stay in the loop um, and what opportunities there will be uh, in particular for that strategic vision consultation. Um, so there's a few things you can do. You can join our mailing list. Um, if you uh, go to our website, um, which I can't type and speak at the same time, apparently. Um, at the very bottom uh, of that will be um, a little tab that you'll be able to join the mailing list on. Um, we also do, like I mentioned at the beginning, hold monthly community calls. And our next one is actually tomorrow um, at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, and at that uh, session, we will be introducing uh, the strategic vision um, and talking a little bit about what further consultation looks like. Um, so if you're interested and able to attend that, uh, do check it out. If you're um, unable to, we do record all of our meetings and post them on our website, so you'll be able to find them there. Um, oh, and before I forget, I have one more link. I'll just post the, the link to that community meeting. Uh, and then uh, following us on social media. So this is our handle. Um, we're available on um, all of these um, platforms. Obviously Twitter is um, super utilized uh, by the open education community. So that's where we tend to post a lot of updates. Um, and then finally, uh, save the date for uh, October 18th to 22nd. Um, definitely gonna be a lot more opportunities to uh, share um, and help us decide uh, you know, the future of what this is going to be. So it's a very exciting process. Um, very you know, grateful that we're able to come and talk to the Michigan community today and hear from them specifically. Um, so, you know, thank you so much uh, for watching um, and feel free to get in touch with any questions. I'll pop my email um, in the chat as well. So it's Haley at sparkopen.org, H-A-I-L-E-Y um, at spark, S-P-A-R-C, open.org. Great. <laughs> thank you so much. I think that's all I have for today. Excellent. Thank you so much, Haley. Uh, we really appreciate it. And, you know, from, from our conference, from the Michigan OER Virtual Summit to Open Education, we really do believe that we're all part of the OER community together and that it's important to all participate and share because that's part of being OER, right? So thank you Absolutely. to Haley. And thank you to everybody uh, who's in the room today, as well as those of you watching later. And I'll just remind you that after this, we have our wrap up session where we're raffling off some great prizes. So don't be late for that. You have to be present to win. Thank you again so much. Really appreciate it. Take care.